Hi, everyone. I'm Jill from Wade and Wendy. I'm one of the um, conference organizers. Uh, we're really excited about today's conversation, recruitment automation trends. I'd like to introduce John Kastenbaum, co-founder of Talent Tech Labs. We'll be monitoring the talk, um, so enjoy it. And make sure to get any questions ready for the end. Um, those can be posted anytime in the chat. Um, just click on sessions and then post your questions. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me today, guys. I'm coming to you live from my guest bedroom. I'm sure we all are, are struggling with uh, uh, this new work from uh, home life. Um, I'm going to give it 30 seconds and I'm going to get started. But uh, I, I do encourage you guys to leverage the chat. I will uh, do my best to uh, answer your questions as they come up. Um, I've structured the talk in a way where there's four different trends. So after each trend, you'll have the ability ability to, um, you know, ask some questions and I'll pause. Dan, great to see you. We got a whole crew here. Really excited. So why don't we get started? So let me just start by introducing myself again here. Uh, this is proof that before the pandemic, uh, I actually had a neck. Um, I'm sure you guys you know, tell, you know, we've all been... Uh, eating a lot here, locked up in our houses. But um, just, just a little background on myself. I a position technology company in 2012, um, have been focused on um, elevating the state of the art recruitment tech, entrepreneur and investor in talent acquisition technology over the last six years at Talent Tech Labs. Um, and actually in my free time, when there is some, I teach entrepreneurship. Uh, and so if anyone uh, of you guys are interested in learning about entrepreneurship, I encourage you to come take my class in NYU. I just want to start by giving you guys an overview of Talentic Labs, just so you can understand uh, why you should listen to the trends I'm about to share with you, give you some context into um, how the sausage is made. So Talentic Labs is a research and advisory firm focused on talent acquisition technology. Uh, we're on a mission to elevate the state of the art and recruitment technology. And we do that by advising large corporations, enterprise companies like, you know, Disney and KPMG and McKinsey and Home Depot, um, also large staffing firms on uh, what emerging technologies they should be leveraging within their recruitment function uh, so to stay efficient, uh, to do to do more with less, to hire diverse talent, et cetera. We're about 15 people. We're out in the market demoing as many talent acquisition technology companies as we can. So to date, I'm sadly, um, I personally demoed probably 2,500 talent acquisition technology companies. Uh, we built profiles of those companies. Um, and actually, in addition to our team of research analysts demoing those technologies and providing our opinions on commercial viability, the founding team's ability to execute, the competitive, um, you know, the competitiveness of the product in the space, unique features, functionality, we also put these technologies in front of heads of talent, CEOs of staffing firms, and we ask them what they think. And actually, we then operationalize all that intelligence into research reports, uh, which we share with the market uh, through our membership. And, and those research reports fall into categories of I'm planning to go through a digital transformation and I want to know what trends um, or what you know the market is doing. So we do post, post reports on the market and what technologies they're looking at buying and, and, and what technologies they're leveraging today. We, we have write-ups on um, many of the vendors in the talent acquisition space um, and uh, a breakdown of their features, functionality, and revenue models. And, and then we teach you how to optimize the technology you currently own. And especially in a time like now where many of you guys are kind of on pause, it's a really important time to make sure you're getting the most of the tools you're leveraging. I'm sure many of you guys have seen our taxonomy. Uh, this is an ecosystem that we put together uh, where we highlight the innovative and influential talent acquisition technology tools. Uh, we break out the space into 34 different sub-verticals, and those are the different bubbles in the map. Um, and that's broken down by feature, functionality, and revenue model. Uh, we publish this uh, every year. Uh, this is uh, We have a new one coming out, I'd say, around September. Um, and uh, every every release, we you see some consolidation. You see uh, new bubbles formed. And so we're very much looking forward to sharing uh, what the new version will look like uh, after we dive in this summer. But um, really the key here is this has created the language to which we're able to communicate with heads of talent, CEOs of staffing firms, and uh, emerging technology companies. And we're we basically we're able to articulate to both sides 
what features and functionality exist and what these companies actually do. And so it's this taxonomy that allows us to track trends. And so some of the trends I'm going to share with you today, um, we believe are, are the most pressing um, you know, in the industry right now. And um, like I said, I, I try to structure the talk in a way where I share the trend and I'll pause for, for 15 seconds to allow some questions. So without further ado, let's start with trend number one. Oh, question. I see Gina asked if that if the ecosystem is proprietary or it's available. You can actually download that on our website. We give it away for free. It's a marketing uh, document. So let's start with trend number one. Uh, matching technology is getting better due to advances in artificial intelligence. So obviously can't talk about automation um, at an automation conference without talking about AI. Um, and so we went out to the market a number of years ago and because we started to realize that every deck that we looked at had AI in it. And it's kind of funny. Five years ago, every deck, every pitch deck that we looked at for a startup uh, said big data. And so, you know, it would make sense that after you're tracking all this big data in your app, you'd now be able to do some artificial intelligence, you know, to make sense of, of, of the information. But um, way too many companies had AI in their deck. And so we went and dug deeper and we tried to figure out who was actually using AI. And when we did that, we, we did a survey of machine learning, natural language processing, uh, deep learning, and neural networks. And what we found was, while over 75% of talent acquisition technology companies said they were leveraging AI in some, some way, shape, or form, most of them were using it, uh, were just using machine learning and natural language processing. And while machine learning and natural language processing are great and actually can help and, and would be considered AI, you know, and, and can help um, with many things, um, we were, you know, it doesn't help with everything that you're hearing these vendors saying they were able to do. And so when we then mapped those, those things to the actual things that were being delivered in market, what we noticed was one, uh, things like recommendation engines, matching engines, prediction engines, uh, those were going to be the lowest hanging fruit that town that, that AI machine learning, natural language processing was going to make an impact on things like contextual language, understanding, um, you know, conversational AI, these were much harder required neural networks, deep learning, and, you know, more advanced teams to be able to make happen. And, and so matching to us is the lowest hanging fruit today for AI. So when your CHRO calls you and says, how can we leverage AI? How can we automate processes? Uh, this is the, the, the short, the short answer to the quickest, uh, the quickest way you could do it today without getting too ahead of yourself. Uh, we, we have on that ecosystem, you saw uh, a category called matching systems. I, I believe that Hired Score is actually um, a sponsor of the event here as well, and they have a booth. Um, but there are two that uh, we wanted to highlight here today, Hired Score and Ideal, two matching systems that um, basically can integrate with your applicant tracking system and allow you to match your candidates against jobs. Your applicant tracking system will tell you they have matching. Um, I will tell you that it's nowhere near as sophisticated as the matching that higher score and ideal have. Um, I would also argue here that your resume parsing technology companies will tell you if they, they have matching and they don't. I would argue that it's nowhere as sophisticated as what higher score and ideal have, right? So um, matching systems exist. You can integrate them with your um, existing applicant tracking systems and uh, they can make a meaningful impact on helping you sort through the mess of applications. And I would argue now more than ever in a time when you're gonna have more candidates applying to jobs than before because there's such high unemployment, um, these kinds of tools are important to focus on. Just some considerations here. What I try to do, I'm just gonna go quickly is wisdom, knowledge, and some data. Um, you know, you're gonna start to see more M&A uh, here um, in, this, in the matching space. This is hot. Opening that I always just acquired by iSIMS. I, I know a few of the PE firms out in the market are looking and shopping for some of these tools. So I, I anticipate you'll see more. Uh, matching scenario, we, we anticipate we'll see significant growth. It has really low adoption today in TA, but um, we say around 12 to 15%. Um, but we, 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 we envision that that's going to be significantly higher. Just to give you some context, and we'll talk about it in a minute, CRMs increased significantly from 2017 at, I think it was around 22% adoption to 2019 or 18 actually at about 62% enterprise adoption, you know, and so these things move quick. So 
Um, you want to stay progressive, pay attention to this. Uh, I'm being sensitive to time, so I'm running through this as quick as I can here. Uh, validation in the assessments category is creating new talent intelligence. This is trend number two. Um, I wanted to talk about assessments, not just because of, of automation, but because these are important now in a world where we want to focus on helping companies leverage technology to hire diverse talent. Assessments are important. And what's relevant around assessments today is that there's significant consolidation. Companies no longer want to use 15 different assessment tools. They want to try to use one vendor. And so you're actually starting to see skill-based assessments, behavioral-based assessments, simulation-based assessments merging into one company. Uh, these are three different categories on our ecosystem. The trend more generally here within assessments has been mobile, gamified, and um, mobile, gamified, and, and these have been used for early career hires because you're able to collect more data in a more in a, in a quicker, more engaging way. And so many of these tools are some of the market leaders. I just wanna highlight here, we do not get paid by vendors uh, to share their logos on the, uh, you know here uh, on our ecosystem. This is completely um, unbiased information. And in many cases, when we highlight something in a deck like this, I'm not sharing my favorite tools. I'm not sharing necessarily the worst, the best, the greatest. I'm just sharing tools that give us good illustrative examples to talk around. But I would suggest many of these are our top leaders in the space. Some, as you saw last year, uh, there's been significant consolidation, as I said, higher view, but Mindex, Montage, Shaker, Cap Capfinity, Koru, SHL, Aspire Minds, and this is gonna keep happening. You're gonna see more and more of this. Trend number three. Uh, there's a new platform emerging. And so you guys saw that ecosystem. It has 34 sub verticals, uh, it's the, the bubbles on the map. Um, we believe there's going to be significant consolidation in that over the next, um, I'd say, three years. But more importantly, um, only, I'd say, seven or eight of those um, bubbles are allow for a platform to be built. And um, in that regard, applicant tracking systems would be a platform, candidate relationship managements would be a platform, social networks, bots, and we'll talk about that a little bit on how they could be a platform. Um, recruitment marketing is a new one. So when I said the ecosystem was going to have new bubbles, um, this is likely going to be a bubble on the ecosystem when we release it in, in September or, or later this year um, because um, we do see it happening. Now, let me explain what I mean. Because I can promise you that your CRM vendor tells you that they do recruitment marketing. And that's part of the confusion. Uh, CRMs are about candidate communication. So candidate comes from a job board to your website. You collect some form of personally identifiable information on that candidate. They didn't apply to a job. They go into your CRM. If they do apply to a job, they go into your ATS. Let's say one to three people percent of people apply to a job. They get into your ATS. Well, you spent money for the other 97% of people to come to your website. CRM, let's say it gets you to 15% of people because you're able to collect PII, personal identifiable information on that 15% that came to your profile. Now, what about the other 95%? What about the other 90% of people uh, that came to your website, didn't give you any personally identifiable information, uh, and actually didn't apply you a job? Well, that's where we think recruitment marketing platforms will help. Uh, these platforms will not only create your career sites and dynamically allow information to show up based on these anonymous people search searching your website, but they will house also recruitment marketing um, functionality like programmatic advertising as well. So we see CRMs and recruitment marketing platforms separating into two separate platforms. CRM being about automating the conversations um, that you have with prospects and recruitment marketing uh, being about attracting candidates, getting intelligence on candidates, tracking anonymous people, building behavioral profiles, and leveraging um, automation around programmatic advertising and automation around um, leveraging those, th those behavioral insights to dynamically change the content on the website to create a better experience for candidates. And so this is something that um, you're seeing now first, actually, I would argue in recruitment marketing agencies. So these will be platforms that recruitment marketing agencies will first bring to market. And so you saw uh, Recruitix and KRT um, merging. And so KRT being a recruitment marketing agency, leveraging Recruitix technology, uh, Symphony Talent and Symphony Talent and Smashfly, um, iSims and Jibe. Um, 
and K1 and Jobvite. I just want to see. I see some questions. There we go. So people are hearing me. I thought I saw someone say they couldn't hear me. Um, so as I said before, 2017 CRM adoption was 22%. Uh, 2018 CRM adoption was 44%. And now 63 in 2019. So, you know, when you look back at matching, that's going to increase significantly over the next year and a half. Um, and actually, like I said, this is going to come out. These new platforms are going to come out of recruitment marketing agencies, but you're going to see independent players building out their own solutions as well. Last but not least, and I want to leave some time for some Q&A, um, and I believe I have until 1210. So um, I will I will leave at least 10 minutes uh, or 1215, I think. So 10 minutes. Um, last but not least, again, can't talk about automation at a recruitment uh, automation conference without talking about bots. Um, now, what's interesting about bots? Uh, first of all, um, if this was six months ago, I would have told you that um, bots keep talking about candidate experience and um, that they solve your candidate experience problem. And the verdict is still very much still out on whether that's the case. And I would still argue that, but that's not really interesting right this minute. Um, what's interesting is that bots are breaking into two distinct solutions. Um, I would argue that they're breaking into conversational AI and RPA. Um, and so we break bots into to three categories, chat, voice, and video. Chat will be conversations at the top of the funnel, pre-apply generally. Voice will be post-apply, apply for a job, get a phone call, and um, you know, get, get a robot interviews you or asks you a series of questions that uh, you know may give them more context on a job. And then video would be a video, having a conversation with a video bot, which is more progressive and frankly, I think in certain ways gimmicky. The second kind of trend here is RPA, recruitment process automation. So talk about a new category uh, launching in the space. Um, I would argue that RPA is a new category that might make its way into the ecosystem. RPA, you know, uh, has been known as robotic process automation outside of recruitment. We're using it as recruitment process automation here. Um, essentially, if you're the conversation layer communicating with the different systems and the candidates communicating with you, um, and you're able to, to give the candidate an assessment and then say, okay, now here's your onboarding material. Uh, you're able to connect the dots between many of these systems and create automation across them. And so, you know, in some ways, some of these RPA players might come to market as not just an RPA player where they sell SaaS, but also as a maybe automated RPO, you know, a recruitment process outsourcing agency. Um, so I think that um, you know, this is going to be a hot area. Um, you see companies like Alio, AFold, Maya, um, raising significant capital um, around bots. Um, and you see existing RPA companies, um, you know, UiPath, Automation Anywhere, uh, trying to make their way into the space. So another area, um, you know, we're going to start to see automation, um, not just in the bots ability to have conversations, but more importantly, in um, recruitment process automation and the systems being able to connect together through this one medium. I'm going to pause here because I see I got some questions and I want to try to address them. Um, so Hannah asked me here, um, who do you think the top players will be in their recruitment marketing space? Um, and Hannah is from Wayfair. So um, I would argue today that they're, they're outside of their recruitment marketing agencies. Um, there is no uh, you know, tech only recruitment marketing platform. Um, I, I love what Recruitix and KRT is doing. I think talent, you know, talent brew um, and some of the work um, that they're doing is, is really interesting. Um, you know, we're talking, we're, we're, you know, when you talk trends, at least the way we look at this, we're six to 12 months ahead of the market. Right. So um, I think that this is just a conversation you want to be having internally and something you want to be thinking about. For example, if you think you're getting recruitment marketing functionality from your CRM, I would argue you have to articulate your team that those are two separate things. Um, similarly, like if you're um, buying an ATS today um, and you're thinking about buying a CRM in the future, um, you know, I do think there's going to be consolidation between ATS and CRM. You've already seen some of that happening. Um, when I say um, consolidation, I mean one company selling both functionality. And so, you know, these are some of the things you want to start to think about. I see Julia asked me um, splitting CRM and recruitment marketing, but the M&A slide shows the combination of companies. Um, 
from those individual areas. So, yes. So great point. Um, now, I said to you also, so I have we have a vision, right? When we say elevate the state of the art in recruitment tech, that's our mission at Talent Tech Labs. Well, that would mean that we need to have a vision for what the state of the art in recruitment tech looks like. Right. So we do have a vision for what the state, the state of the art recruitment technology stack um, looks like in the future. In that regard, um, you know, we do believe just, for example, with with CRM and recruitment marketing, I actually believe that um, those will eventually be separate, um, se separate companies um, that that own that, um, you know, in any space you do see just to give you an example in um you know, talent management, you know, look at companies, you know, the consolidation that's occurred within ADP, within Ultimate Software. Um, you will see players that do it all, um, but I think you'll also see best-in-class players that focus on their one solution and, and they do that area best. Um, I see Christy said, it's challenging that all hires still need to go through my ATS, but ATSs for the most part are so antiquated and clunky that I run multiple solutions in my tech stack that are not integrated. Yeah, I mean, it's it's frustrating. I think that, you know, many of the newer ATSs, more progressive ATSs, you know, if you're an enterprise company, think about like an iSIMS or smart recruiters, um, you know, they, they will start to, to, to let you leverage point solutions in the market through their open marketplaces. Um, let me see what else we have here. There, so, uh, Christy, I always get the, the question, uh, what you know, what's the one solution I could use for my organization globally? And the answer is, unfortunately, uh, there isn't one. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't even say there is one within the United States. Um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's just, you know, first of all, um, the, t there's too many processes in place going on at the same time. Lots of money being devoted to solving some of the individual components. I I'd say six years from now. Um, like I said, you'll see some con consolidation. You'll see some, um, you know, solutions. I see Tony mentioned Workday. Yes, Workday too. Uh, Workday, you know, ha has definitely spent more time focused on the recruitment function. Um, Julia asked suggestions on how to bring recruiters along the ride for learning how to use the new technologies. Yeah, I, I would argue that, um, Julia, that, Adoption is a challenge. Frankly, that's you know part of the reason why we exist as an organization. Not only helping organizations uh, select the right tools, but um, optimize them once they own them. You know that takes some change management. That takes process design. Um, and I think the argument has to be: it's my, our thesis um, that this is going to be a combination of tech and touch, uh, which means that we do not think that technology is going to disintermediate the recruitment process. We think that you're going to have recruiters that do what they do best which is engage and technology compute. And in that regard, um, I think that as long as they buy into the fact that this should help them do their jobs better um, and elevate them to be more strategic within the function, um, you know, I think they'll get bought in. Any other questions? I know we're running out of time here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll be here a uh, majority of the day. And I will be in the networking room. If anyone wants to reach out to me, uh, you have my email address here and you can download the ecosystem. So appreciate it for the time. Thank you guys.